Meanwhile, the rooftop of the apartment building lay in ruins, with the men sprawled everywhere, exhausted and defeated. Jong-un attributed his fatigue to his advancing age and inquired whether they should conclude their confrontation. He referred to the individuals as Namgung's little ones, suggesting that they were under Namgung's influence, approaching the team leader and the lady. The lady questioned Jong-un's motives and why he had suddenly revealed himself. Jong-un, instead of answering her directly, posed a question of his own, inquiring why they had hesitated in their swordplay. He suggested that if they had truly intended to kill him, he wouldn't have emerged unscathed, rendering their skills meaningless. Jong-un asked if they had held back because he had asked them to do so. He turned his gaze toward the team leader and advised him that in the world of martial arts, one needed to act like a martial artist. Hesitation, he pointed out, would only hinder their progress. This left the man clenching his teeth in frustration. The lady, her anger rising, demanded to know what yang knew and what qualifications he had to make such statements. She even threatened to kill him right there. jong acknowledged that he had overstepped his bounds and announced his departure, suggesting that if fate willed it, they might meet again. With that, he vanished into thin air, leaving the lady sitting on the ground, weary and bewildered as she wondered where yang had suddenly disappeared to and checked on her senior's condition. The man, meanwhile, remained silent, tightly gripping his sword. jong Gun swiftly leapt off the rooftop, convinced that now that the big fish had made an appearance, the small fish would go unnoticed. He couldn't help but think of Hygiene, and hoped that Hygiene wouldn't attract any unwanted attention. In the dark tunnel, Hygiene confronted Tai Song, demanding to know what martial arts and secrets he was referring to. Tai Song aimed a fist at him, warning him that he wouldn't find out anything if he didn't evade. Hygiene leaped away, landing a few paces apart, clutching his head in pain and frustration. <sighs> tai Song, still on guard, pointed out that Hygiene clearly knew how to use Ki and accused him of pretending to be ignorant. He went on to reveal that his father was involved in the King Company's business and that he was the company's successor, often referred to as the prince in the industry. Tai Song was surprised that Hygiene had managed to learn so much in such a short time. He then questioned Hygiene about the remnants of sect members hiding somewhere and the source of his knowledge. Tai Song's demeanor turned menacing as he threatened Hygiene to reveal the truth while implying that his life might be spared if he complied. However, Hygiene countered by asking what would happen if he refused to cooperate. Tai Song responded with a sinister <laughs> smile, advancing toward Hygiene, laughing and clenching his fist, implying that he would be subjected to a severe beating and humiliation. In a desperate attempt to shield his face, Hygiene raised his hands, but he quickly realized that his guard was insufficient. He leaped to the side to evade Tai Song's attack. Realizing that his ki couldn't fully protect him, Tai Song launched another assault, taunting Hygiene for recklessly spreading his ki without skill. He struck Hygiene's hands, which were still guarding his face, and berated him as trash. Tai Song provocatively asked if Hygiene had derived enjoyment from beating up others with martial arts, as if he believed he could take over the school. He cruelly stated that Hygiene remained as pathetic as ever and vowed to kill him and the person who had taught him martial arts for not knowing his place and fooling around. To Hai-jin's surprise, Tai Song suddenly turned around and delivered a powerful kick to his chest, shouting that this was not how things were supposed to be. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. What is the best martial arts weapon? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now, back to the recap. Despite being thrown away, Hai-jin struggled to stand up, while Tai Song questioned why he bothered learning martial arts when he could have kept a low profile. Tai Song playfully suggested that Hai Jin would have been a bit smarter and that he would have saved face in front of Ahan, emphasizing the value of friendship in such situations. Confused, Hai Jin asked Tai Song about Ahan and the idea of beauty. Tai Song furthered the intrigue, questioning whether Hai Jin believed that the bullies followed him blindly just because they listened to someone. He insinuated that if Hai Jin wanted to place blame, Ahan should be the target because people sometimes go to great lengths to impress girls. Shocked by this revelation, Hajin was about to question Tai Song further when Tai Song <laughs> humorously finished his sentence by saying that he had been playing with Hajin's emotions. Tai Song bent down, signaling the end of their playful banter, and released his red smoke aura, which burned everything it touched. Hajin stood up and confirmed that he had made a decision. He acknowledged that he had been flustered initially, but had now resolved to proceed. He clenched his fist, releasing his blue aura, and told Tai Song that he needed to continue learning and would figure the rest out later. Tai Song, angered by Hai Jin's response, insulted him and questioned his worth as a prince. He then began relentlessly punching Hai Jin, who shielded his face with his hands. Tai Song taunted Hai Jin, suggesting that blindly copying others wouldn't get him far. As Tai Song continued his assault, Hai Jin pushed back with his aura, causing Tai Song to pause and question whether he had been pushed aside. Hai Jin thanked Tai Song for teaching him something valuable that strength could be increased by kneading the dough of his aura. He released his aura and challenged Tai Song, 
stating that it wasn't as difficult as Taisang believed. Taisang, furious at Hai Jin's glare, unleashed more aura and shouted at him not to give him that look. They both assumed positions for a showdown, with Hai Jin inviting Tai Song to come at him. Tai Sang charged toward Hai Jin, creating cracks in the ground. While Hai Jin braced himself, their fists collided, and Hai Jin was momentarily pushed back. However, he stood his ground and taunted Tai Song, asserting that compared to his master, Tai Song was nothing. Suddenly, a smiling man feigned surprise and struck Hai Jin in the nape, catching him off guard. Hai Jin shouted in surprise, and his vision began to blur. The man apologized to him explaining that he had to stop the fight at that point. Hei Jin collapsed on the ground while Tai Song asked the man what the hell he was doing there. The man sweetly called Tai Song Young Master, told him it's been a long time, and asked if he thinks his father might call for an emergency meeting because the general has appeared. The man told Tai Song that he was just out for a walk, sensed some energy, so he came to check it out. It turns out it was the Young Master's friend. The man told him that he owes him one, making him surprised and asked what he is talking about. However, the man just asked him back what he meant when he saved him, and told him that if he had left it alone for a few more seconds, he would be done. Tai Song told the man not to be ridiculous, and even if he left it alone, he would have won on his own. Then Tai Song told the man that he was annoying, butting in and talking nonsense. He angrily glared at the man who was glaring back in silence. However, the man smilingly apologized to him, and told him to forgive him with his generous heart, making Tai Song angrier. Then the man grabbed Hai Jin, telling Tai Seng that he'll take that friend of his, and that their meeting turned out to be more fun than he thought. The man walked out of the tunnel, holding Hajin on his shoulder without noticing someone hiding behind the tree. Ahan peeked out and was frustrated to see Hajin being dragged out. Later, at the King Company headquarters in the city, the team leader and the lady were walking in the corridor. The lady told the man that she really didn't want to go in and asked if she could just say she was sick and leave early. The man replied that it was pointless to escape he understands she doesn't like it, but she should just bear with it for a little while. They arrived at the room door. They are Nam Gong Jin Jung, the sixth chief of the seven departments, and Nam Gong Jin Ah, the seventh chief. The person told them to come in, and the president was waiting for them. Inside the room, they saw five more people, the top executives of King Company's seven departments. The lady told them that she heard they were all robbed by the general, and the second chief of the seven departments, Big, called them a bunch of trash. The third chief of the seven departments, Glasses, looked at them teasingly. The fourth chief of the seven departments, Tank, laughed at them. And the fifth chief of the seven departments, Rapid, teasingly laughed at them too. Jin asked them what would have been different if they had fought, and Big replied that she would have been better than the two trashes. Big asked Jin what her problem was and if she wanted to fight. Jin Ah furiously grabbed her sword, but Jin Jung told her to wait and calm down. Suddenly, a man shouted that it was enough, and the King Company president, King, told them to calm down and that he didn't call them there to see them fight each other. Jin walked away in silence and Big sat back down. King told Jina and Jin Jung that General Park jong Goon was strong and they were not to be blamed for losing to him, so they shouldn't blame themselves. Jin Jung thanked King. Rapid asked them why the old man suddenly appeared after hiding all this time, but Tank just asked Rapid back if he wasn't itchy, and one of the five asked them what they knew. King asked them if there was anything noteworthy, and Jin Jung replied that, in his personal opinion, he got the feeling that Zhang Gun was deliberately attracting attention. Big asked him for his basis, and he replied that Zhang Gun had a lot of spare time on his hands, and it was frustrating. But if Zhang Gun had wanted to, everyone there would have been dead. Zhang Gun hadn't done it, and only a few people were injured, so he felt like Zhang Gun wanted to attract their attention. King told him that his opinion does have some merit. Big told him that even if he tried to dress it up nicely, in the end, he owed his life to the enemy, and he always talked about being from a martial arts family. She asked him if he wasn't ashamed of himself for not being embarrassed, making Jin furious and shouting that it was another insult. Jin Jung stopped his sister, replying that it was true, and they had nothing to say. Big shouted that it was boring. Glasses told them that if Jin Jung's hypothesis is correct, even though it is risky to appear in person, it appears that something Jung Goon didn't want to be revealed has occurred. In that case, the first thing that comes to his mind is that suddenly a man appeared in the meeting, holding Hai Jin, and continued by saying he guessed it was Jung Goon's disciple. The Iron Department's first chief, Cruel, apologized to the president for being a little late. Jin Jung was surprised to see Cruel holding a man, and Big asked Cruel what he was doing there when he said it was boring. Cruel asked her back what she thought of him and told her that sometimes he has to miss out due to unavoidable circumstances, but he does his best when he is there. While throwing Hajin on the floor, Cruel told King that Hajin seemed to be his son's friend, and they were fighting. Also, Hajin was quite good, so he decided to intervene. Even if he hadn't, his son would have definitely won, making King look at Hajin in silence. Then, Cruel told King that at the same time, the general who had been in hiding for several years suddenly reappeared, 
and a friend who could do that also suddenly appeared. It doesn't seem like a coincidence, but it was not certain, and they'll find out if they play with that friend for a while, looking at Hyjin, who was passed out on the floor. Meanwhile, in some apartments, a uniform was on the floor, and when looked at closely, the uniform owner was Wu Ahan. She tied her hair up, put her belt on, placed her sword behind her back, and walked away, a completely different person. She speedily jumped out of her apartment building by building, then slid down, knowing that she should hurry up. She safely landed on the ground and ran straight to the apartment door, thinking that it must be the house where she found Kengon, and there must be a clue to his origins. She grabbed the doorknob, knowing that somehow she needed to contact Han's master. Suddenly, Ahan hit the door hard near her, making her surprised. When she looked back, she saw someone telling her that she can't just go into someone else's house. She looked at him, agreeing, realizing that he was General jong -un. He told her that he remembered her familiar outfit. Then he told her to think carefully before answering, and asked her who she is. But she just told him back if it was General Park and told him to put down his cane, because she was in a hurry right now. However, he just told her to answer his question, and asked her again who she was and what she was doing there. She replied that she understood, and he said he recognized that outfit. Then she grabbed his sword behind her, introduced herself as Ahan, and told him that they were on the same side because she is the daughter of the Majesty. He pulled his cane back, telling her that she was really the Majesty's daughter, and she told him that he wouldn't forget him. He told her how could he forget the leader of the Pure Stream sect. He was one of the strongest martial artists he had ever seen, even among those who fought against the Emperor. Majesty was strong, wise, and cheerful, a man who made him feel good when he was around him. But in the end, he fell into their trap and died. He told her that he did hear that he had a daughter, and that if Majesty had survived, he would be about General's age. He also told her that she said her name was Wu Ahan, and that he has many questions, but for now, he'll just ask one. Then he seriously asked her what happened to Ha Jin. She put his sword on her back while realizing that Jang Gun is really the one who taught and told Jang Gun that she doesn't usually like to talk about coincidences, but his disciple is currently in serious danger. Meanwhile, in some rooms, blood splattered everywhere, and Ha Jin was being beaten up continuously while being chained. He kneeled on the ground, choking on his own blood, but Cruel told him that it was enough warm-up for now and that he was just asking. Cruel wondered if he was going to talk. Then Cruel showed jong Goon a picture while asking him if that homeless old man was his master and where he is now. However, he just looked at the picture and used his aura to free himself from the chains. He was surprised when the chains reacted and became tighter, and Wan told him that it was useless because it's a special technique. If he answers honestly, he'll let him go, and if he wants... He'll take him to the boss and even get him a job while grabbing his hair. But he just spit on Cruel, who blocked it using jong Gun's picture. Then Cruel looked at him creepily and threw the picture while saying that a man should have that much guts. Then Cruel thanked him for not revealing his cover so quickly and headed toward the tools on the table. He thought it was his fault because, even though his master warned him, he took it lightly and followed his emotions. And that is what happened, so at least he has to take responsibility for it himself. Then he told Cruel to do whatever he wants, but it won't work and he doesn't know anything. Cruel grabbed the scalpel, telling him that everyone says it at first. Then he showed the sharp scalpel to him and told him that they should start with his fingernails. In the other room, King is sitting with Glasses. King asks Glasses how it's going, and Glasses replies that the reconnaissance team has initiated the operation. If they wait a little longer, they'll gather some information. King says they must locate jong Goon by any means necessary, because if they can catch him and get what he has, even the Emperor can be surpassed and their company will be at the top of the martial arts world. King also tells Glasses that the fact must not reach the ears of the other organizations, and asks about the cover-up. Glasses reply that there is no problem, at least for the time being. On the other hand, outside the King Company building, the guards were looking around. Then a lady in heels and a man in the proper shoes both walked closer to the company. The guards told them to wait and asked who they were, and if they knew where they were because they can't just barge in. However, the lady released her yellow aura, telling the guards to move, and the guards were down on the ground by a strong force. One of the guards looked up to see who it was and replied, Okay, letting the lady and the man walk inside. A moment later, in front of the King Company chairman's office, the guards were surprised to hear someone in their earpiece device. The man asked what he said while the other man was trying to get the person on the other line. One of the guards told the other person to wait a minute, and he'll call back. When the man looked in front of him, he was surprised to see the lady saying that they are pretty good, and she doesn't think words will be enough. Then the man said that it was how it was. One of the guards reported that it was an emergency, and he had to tell the CEO right now. The man released his yellow aura and walked closer to the guards who were ready to stop him. However, the man just put his hands on the guards and released a little bit of his power, making the guards thrown inside the room and breaking the door in the process. 
Glasses looks back in surprise, and King looks at them in shock too. The lady tells King that it's been a while, and the woman, known as God, tells him that she heard that the general appeared there recently. Then the man tells him that according to the agreement, he would like him to share all the information he has. The Special Martial Artist Management Bureau Director known as Emperor. Meanwhile, in Hyajin's room, Ahan was standing near the window, silently waiting. Then Jung Gun, coughing, told her that he had made her wait. She asked him what took him so long, but she stopped talking when she saw Jung Gun in uniform. He told her that he knew the situation was urgent, but they needed to be prepared, especially since they were going to fight the king. They needed to do everything they could. He also mentioned that he couldn't believe Hajin was in the same class as King's son, and all of it couldn't just be a coincidence. So he was sure she was not there by chance. She agreed with him and told him that, as he said, she intentionally chose to be in the same class as Tai Song. She had been collecting information while concealing her identity and waiting for an opportunity to avenge her father. Then she asked him if this was the opportunity she had been waiting for and if he could defeat King. The old man replied that he was old, the king had gotten stronger, and going to his headquarters made it even more difficult. However, she shouldn't worry because he wouldn't lose to the king, and he would never lose. Meanwhile, in the company, the god and the emperor were around king. God told them that it had been a while since the three of them had been together, and asked if it had been ten years, because even though so much time had passed, they were all the same. But she king furiously told her that it had been, except for her, a witch-like woman. She laughingly thanked King for the compliment, An Emperor told them to drop the chit-chat. Then he asked King to give him all the information he had on the General. Glasses asked them what they were talking about after suddenly barging in and what they meant by the General. God called Glasses a kid and told him that adults were talking, so it was better if he stayed quiet, using her aura to make Glasses bend down because of the Force. Emperor told King that if he was trying to play dumb, it was useless because he already had a pretty good guess making King ask Emperor what he was talking about. Emperor replied that the fact the General raided one of his offices, and the fact that he has a high school student who is suspected to be the General's disciple, made King shocked. Emperor guessed that he underestimated the Special Martial Artists Management Bureau's intelligence. Then God teasingly told Emperor that it was creepy like a stalker. Emperor told them that after the war ended 18 years ago, their two organizations made an agreement with the Special Martial Artists Management Bureau to share information about surviving illegal martial artists with each other and cooperate when they secure them. Also among them is the General. Emperor tells King that Park jong -un is a class, a dangerous person, and that he is obligated to report any information he finds to the Special Martial Artists Management Bureau immediately. But he didn't do it, so it is his last chance, and he better share the information. If he doesn't, he will be considered to have violated the agreement. They will take appropriate action. Then Emperor released his powerful aura and told King that he would disband the King Company. He asked him what he is going to do, making King surprised. Meanwhile, outside, jung -un and Ahan landed on the building roof near the King Company building. Ahan told jung -un that if her guess was correct, Hygiene was in the basement of the building in the torture room. He told her that even after a few years, the dirty stench is still the same, and that he'll get Hygiene out first. He was about to explain to Ahan how to go to the basement, but suddenly a powerful yellow aura came out of the building, making him surprised. He knew that the aura was from the Emperor because no one else could have such a fierce aura, the Emperor sure senses it quickly and comes looking. She tells him to wait a minute and if the Emperor is there, he continued by saying that she is probably there too, since the three organizations have made such an agreement, making her shocked. Then she tells him that she hated to say it after calling him, but if that was the case, she thought it was best to retreat for now. She didn't think even the General could take on those three at once, and if they rushed in now, there is a high chance that they'll get caught. Instead of saving Kong Hajin, they probably won't kill Hajin because Hyjin is an important informant, so for now they should retreat and plan for later. He tightly grabs his cane and tells her that she is right. Meanwhile, in the King Company basement, at the entrance to the torture room, God tells King that it is barbaric, and he replies that it is a surefire way. She has no right to interfere with their methods. Then they arrived at the door and knocked on it. Cruel opened the door while asking what it was, and that he was busy right now. But then he noticed that the guests had arrived. Emperor asks if that man is cruel. God asks if it was the pretty good kid too, about right, and Man Level King asked W if he had gotten anything. Cruel replied that he was afraid not yet, then Cruel explained to them that Hygiene was quite a tough kid, which is rare to see these days. If they waited a day or two more, he could make something, but Songai replied no, and that she didn't like it because she was busy. Then she asked them if it was okay that she was going to make Hygiene talk right now. Emperor replied fine, making Cruel angry. She looks at Hygiene and says that Cruel really did get it in a barbaric way. He asked her what it was again and told her that he didn't know who she was, but she should go away. But she just tells him that he looked about the same age as her daughter, 
but he had been through a lot, and she holds his face while telling him to just wait a little longer because she'll make him feel comfortable now. Then she used her aura and asked him if he could tell her where the general was, making him stunned in shock while the men were looking at them in the back. He knows that he shouldn't say it, but his mouth is acting up, and when he's about to tell where the general was, suddenly Jongan appeared behind them and said that the general was there, making them shocked. He glared at them, and King and God were surprised to see him, but Emperor just tells him that it was unexpected he didn't think he'd attack, then asks him if he thinks the king is alone. He replied that it was not, but if they were martial artists, there would be times when they just couldn't back down, softly looking at the beaten Hajin. Then he slams his foot on the ground and swings his cane forward while releasing his powerful aura, furiously tells them that he dared to touch his disciple and asks them if they are prepared. Meanwhile, outside the building, Ahan was still on the other building's rooftop, continuously cursing to herself, remembering Jong and agreeing with her. When she was about to tell him that they should go, Jongen attacked her on the shoulders and on her side, making her kneel on the floor. Jongen told her that she should stay there and not worry because he'd come back and release her. She noticed that she couldn't move her body and asked him why. He replied that he was tired of seeing young people die instead of old people, and if they are martial artists, there are times when they can't back down. On the other hand, inside the room, Jongun was looking at them while releasing his power. He worriedly called his master, but Jongun told him that he had been through a lot and he'd save him soon. She always used his jade palm and added the divine art to attack Jonggun, but Jonggun used his iron hammer technique, demonic crush, to block King's attack. Then he turned around, making King shocked and kicked King away. King managed to stop himself from being thrown, and he asked Ha Jin before he freed him what should he do with these guys, making King call him an old man in anger and shouting to order his people to get out of there and ensure the employee's safety. But Cruel told King that it was a golden opportunity, he wanted to fight the general too. Glasses also agreed and told Chimu that they would also provide support, but King furiously shouted that he'll take that old man down himself, and he won't forgive anyone who gets in his way, making Glasses feel the force of his stare, but Cruel just said that King has gotten serious. Then Cruel grabbed Glasses, telling him that they should go, because when King is like this, not even God can stop him. God told Emperor that King has always been obsessed with weird things, but Emperor just kept quiet. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out at Ryan Balana underscore zero seven who commented part five on our betrayed isekai video. Thanks for commenting. Jangun peeked at the man who got out, telling King that his pride was still there, but King, who was using his jade palm third level, replied no. Then he jumped forward to him and told him that it was confidence. He launched his fist while using his tiger's roar claw technique swinging his cane around to shield himself. Noticing that King was stronger than he thought, King asked him if it is all he has got, and told him that he has been training tirelessly for that very moment, and he'll seek revenge for his defeat from 18 years ago. He simply told King that he is certainly amazing, but then he swung his cane forward, making King surprised. Then he attacked King using his iron hammer technique, Six Swarm Heaven, telling him that he is not the only one who has been training. King covered his face with his arms while Jung Gun was hitting him. Then he speedily appeared in front of King, and told him that he is tough when he thought he is a pushover. Then he told him to keep taking it, and he swung his cane forward to attack King, who was covering his face and waiting for the attack to hit him. But then jong -gun speedily ran behind him, making him shocked. Then jong -gun broke the chains and held Hyajin, asking him if he was okay and if he could hold on. He asked his master why he was helping him when he got caught because of his mistake, but jong -gun told him that it was only natural for a master to protect his disciple. King furiously called jong -gun, making jong tell him that they should discuss it later, but for now, they should get out of there. While getting something from his jacket, he threw a bomb at King, who angrily asked him if he thinks he'll just let him leave so easily. Then he used his aura to take off the bomb trigger, and it exploded in King's face. King angrily asked him what nonsense it is, but he just jumped away while holding Hei Jin, and told King that he's glad he is still simple-minded. He ran speedily toward the door, telling Hei Jin to just hold on a little longer, because if they kept going at full speed, they could come out. But then Sangai sweetly called him, making him surprised. He blocked in time as God attacked while telling him that he has used all of his modern weapons. She also told him that she'd love to play a one-on-one -on -one duel, but if he attempted to escape, it was a different matter, to which Emperor agreed. Emperor told Chimu that he attempted to honor his desires, but a fair fight is distinct from preventing an escape, and he can't allow Jonggun to leave at that point, making King pissed. King God and Emperor looked at him, the general, making him realize that as he expected, things don't go smoothly. Then Jonggun asked Hygiene if he can run, and he replied yes somehow, to which Jonggun said it was a relief. Then Jonggun lifted him up and forcefully threw him out of the room, 
making him shocked. Jong-un told him to hurry up and get away while he'll keep them occupied there. He tried to tell his master to wait, but Jong-un just closed the room door, smiling at him. Then Jong-un faced them, saying that he has managed to fulfill his goal somehow, and asked them if adults should be left to the adults. Then he swung his cane, telling them that if they seek his head, they should take it whenever they please. On the other hand, Hei Jin knocked on the torture room door while calling his master continuously. He was frustrated that, because of him, his master was sacrificing, and he thought that if he had only behaved properly, that wouldn't have happened. Suddenly, someone asked him how he managed to escape, and told him that the old man is really amazing. Then Cruel told him that he came by just in case, but he was glad he did. Cruel also told him that he was told not to touch the general, but he wouldn't mind if he played with him a little. Then Cruel put his sword back in its sheath, and told him that he'll let him do his best, and he could use one of those swords, making him angrily call Cruel a bastard and stand up telling Cruel that he'll kill him. On the other hand, inside the room, Emperor told jong -un that he is planning to buy time for his disciple to escape, and asked him if he really thinks it is possible against the three of them. He swung his cane backward and told them that they won't know until he tries. Then he jumped toward them speedily, and activated his Iron Hammer technique, the sixth level, to attack King, making King surprised. But King managed to block it using his Tiger Hammer Strike in time but he noticed that jong -un had gotten stronger than before. He forcefully pressed his cane on King, making King forcefully thrown hard on the ground, and Songai surprised. But Emperor just silently looked at King. Emperor told them that it was congenital true energy, and jong -un raised his Kai in exchange for his life. jong -un told them that he had to do at least that much against the three of them, but Emperor told him that he can't understand it, and asked him if that kid is worth going to such length for. He replied that he'd never understand, because he was a person who only saw people as tools. Then he slammed his cane on the ground, telling them that the place was a bit cramped for four people to fight, and the ground shook hard. Then he swung his cane around him, telling them that they should change the location. The King Company building slowly collapsed, floor by floor, and the building was destroyed. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.